Hello. So the purpose of this video is going to be to remind you how to use the BX61, which is currently under this dust cover, to take bright field images. So um, new rules, we have to use PPE for the system. That includes masks and gloves. So here are my gloves and here's my mask. So that's good. That means this is done. Now we need to do disinfection. So this is actually hard to do one-handed. So I'm just gonna show you where I'm going to do it and then I'm gonna stop the video to do it and I'll continue after I've done that disinfection. So let me take off the dust cover and show you what you need to disinfect on this system. So you need to disinfect the eyepiece with pure ethanol using lens paper. So that means we're going to use this ethanol, this lens paper, and we're gonna wipe both eyepieces and the region around them. Then we need to disinfect with 70% ethanol on a paper towel or a Kim wipe. And we need to do the keyboard, the mouse, and the knobs. So the knobs include things like these, 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 and these. Basically anything on the microscope that you much, might, might touch, you want to disinfect. And you do that with the 70% ethanol, which is here, and Kim wipes, which are here. So I'm going to do that. I can't do it one-handed, so I'll stop the video and continue after that's complete. Okay, so I've disinfected the microscope. What's next? I need to turn it on. As I said, this video uh, is a refresher for how to use the microscope to take bright field images. So I'm going to grab the instructions for turning it on, and I'm gonna look at the section for bright field imaging. So confirm that the microscope is available, then log into the kiosk. I just did that. Um, off camera, turn on the Olympus box. That's item number three. So if you recall, that is down here. You can see a number three. That's on. Turn on the Ratiga camera. The light will turn on. So we're going to go up here. This is the Ratiga camera. You can see this is Ratiga there. We turn the light by pressing this button. We turn the camera on by pressing that button. You can see the light that indicates that it's on. Pull the DIC slider to the out position if applicable. So if you recall, this thing here is the DIC slider. The out position is where it is right now. The in position is if you release this set screw, push it in until it clicks. That is what it looks like in the in position. You should not have it in the in position unless you're doing DIC illumination, which most people aren't, and if you are, you know what, what you're doing, why, and how to do it. So if you come and see the microscope, and this part looks like that, you need to release this set screw and gently pull it out until it clicks. If you go too far, you'll pull the whole thing out. If that happens, just gently put it back in. It goes in at a slight angle, you can see here, and it'll click. If you push it too far, it'll go too far in. Now note that put it, pulling the DIC slider out doesn't have anything to do with this. Okay, so you're trying to pull this whole block out. And since it's in the out position, I'm gonna lock it. All right, so let's continue with the startup instructions. So the next is to configure the camera slider positions. So we need the light to go from the lamp, which is at the back of the microscope here. That light will come in through here, then bounce up through this go into the sample, then through the subjective, and then it goes up here, and it can go either to the eyepieces, to this camera, which is used for fluorescence imaging, or this camera, which is used for bright field imaging. So we need the light to go where we want it. And to do it, we're gonna control that with these two sliders. As it says in the instructions, for bright field, we want the top slider to be in and the bottom to be out. So we're gonna push that one in, and this one we're going to pull out. And you can see here it says bright field pull out, bright field push in. All right, so now we're going to turn on the computer and log in and then start velocity. So to turn on the computer, that is this button. It takes a moment for things to start up. Once the computer has finished starting up, this is what you'll see. You need to click on Neville, that's the nickname for this computer, and input the password, which is MSL. And then you need to start Velocity. 
which is the software that controls the microscope. When you do, just double click on it once. You can also, if you don't want to double click, you can click on this icon down here once. I'm just going to double, double click up here. And then wait. If you don't wait and you double click again, you'll get an error message. So you just have to be a little bit patient. There you can see Velocity has started. And when you start Velocity, you get this, where it says you can create a new library, open an existing library, or do a video preview. So you want to create a new library. Every time you start a new day, you want to create a new library. I'm going to go up, give myself staff data. So you would put your, your files in user data on the D drive, on the E drive, excuse me. So on the data drive, you go to user data, make a folder for yourself if it's not there. I'm just going to make one that says Pablo Ariel. And then I'm going to create a library. And I'm going to give it the name of today's date. The idea is that this library is what's going to hold all of the images that we're going to image today. OK, so I'm going to create this here. Then to actually uh, ensure that the software um, controls the microscope and sets it up for bright field imaging, we're going to go up here to where it says Video Preview. We're going to click there once. And on the other side of the screen, we're going to select the proper setting, which is bright field. If the microscope had not been on this setting, it would have made some noises. Um, if here, where you see that it says Retiga 4000R, if it says Hamamatsu, that means that another camera was on and you need to go to video and there will be a source option at the very top of video and you can toggle between Hamamatsu and Retiga, and you should toggle it to Retiga. Uh, but in this case, the only camera that was on was the Retiga, and so that's what's here, so we are actually ready to go. Don't pay attention to what's on the screen, we'll worry about that later. Now let's go to the microscope and see um, how to set things up to get an image there. All right, so here's the microscope. What do we need to worry about when we're doing bright field imaging? Um, so we need to worry about a few things. First, um, if you look here, this is the intensity of light that hits the sample. Um, this should be at 9, because if it's too low, it'll make the, the light look very yellow. Um, so we need to figure out how to put that on the 9 setting. So one option is if we go to this side of the microscope, there's a button that says camera. So if I press that one, that will take it to the proper level for taking pictures, which is 9. Okay, if that for some reason doesn't work, you can use these buttons, which will control the intensity and will make it get to um, nine, which is the proper level. Okay, so that's one thing. We just need to check that we have the proper amount of light. Then we need to check here um, that these buttons are set correctly. So if you look at these buttons carefully, you can see there's two at the back, and these are push buttons. Excuse me. So there's two at the back and then there's two in the front. These two have um, these acronyms, LBD and OP. These should both be in, in that position. What these do, these are filters that make the light that has a slight yellowish tinge, it makes it white, okay? So it more properly illuminates the sample with the right color scheme. And then these control the intensity of the light. They're neutral density filters, meaning they don't change the color of the light that illuminates the sample. They just change its intensity. The one that says ND25 lowers it to 25% of what comes out of the lamp, and this lowers it to 6. If you combine them, you get 1.5%, which is 6% of 25%, or vice versa. These you should set to whatever is comfortable to you, okay? Um, if you want them both out, it'll be bright. If that's comfortable, that's fine. If you want one of them in, it'll be slightly dimmer. If you have the other, um, it might be dimmer if it's the 6. And if you have both in, uh, then it'll be very dim. But whatever is convenient and comfortable for you, that's fine. Okay. What else do we need to take care of here? Um, so a few things. Uh, we'll move an XY with these controls. And then the focus, we can control on the other side with this knob or that knob. So another thing that's important about the focus is this does not have a mechanical fine and coarse focus. Um, instead, it toggles between them with this button here. And it never tells you what it's on, but just remember it starts on fine, okay? Um, furthermore, this button, you can see it says escape. 
if you press that button, the stage retracts. If you press it again, it goes back up. The idea is that this gives you some space to put in the sample. Okay, and then to go back to where you were in focus. Now, if you retract it and then accidentally touch this, you can hear the beep, it will no longer go back up. In fact, it'll go even lower, and that's a safety measure because it doesn't want you accidentally ramming the sample into the objective, okay? All right, so now that we have the microscope more or less set up, let's put on a sample. So this here is an H&E slide uh, of a mouse brain, and I'm gonna put it on, and this is what I'm going to use to, uh, to show you some basic things, okay? Um, you always put these slides cover slip side up, so you want the cover slip facing the objective. And you can fix it in place by doing the following. There's a clasp here that you can move out of the way, and then you can just slide this into position, okay? A good idea is to position it in X, Y, such that the light is hitting the actual sample. So that's hard to see uh, on the camera, sorry. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for it that um, that is what I did. It's also a good idea to start with a lower mag objective if possible. Um, so let's switch to something like a 10X, where uh, we have a kind of a, a larger field of view. Okay, so now what I'm going to do um, is just show you one final thing that you, that you have to be aware of that happens on the microscope and not on the software, which is if you're using objectives that are 10x or above, this lens here needs to be in position. The way you put that lens in position is by clicking this button here that says TL. So now because it is in position, you'll see that when I press that button, that lens will swing out. If I press it again, it swings back in. Again, this lens, which you move by using the TL button, has to be in position when you're using any objective that's 10x or above. Now, if we were to go to the 4x objective, which all of the objectives have been changing by using this keypad, then you need to make sure that that lens is retracted because else you'll get some clear vignettes in the field of view, okay? I'm gonna go back to 10X, that lens is in, and so now I am ready to um, focus, which that I, I won't show you, I'm just going to do it, but then I'll show you how to take an image uh, in the Velocity software. Um, since I can't show you what it looks like when I'm focusing, I'm gonna use the eyepieces, and I'm gonna move this knob. Um, since I know this distance is quite large right now, I'm going to move this knob so that the sample moves towards the objective until I can see something in focus. Okay. So once the sample is properly placed on the microscope and in focus as assessed visually, so I did that by eye here, we can now turn our atten attention to velocity and trying to figure out how to make sure the settings are proper there. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, because this is a Windows 7 machine, I was unable to find a way to directly record the screen. Uh, which is why we're doing it through my phone. Uh, I realize that's not optimal, but I apologize. I couldn't find a workaround that would allow me to directly record the screen. Um, so let's go through what we need to do here. As you can see, right now this is completely pink. That is, just take my word for it, not what you see by eye. So clearly something is wrong. And this may or may not be what you see when you start. You may actually see an image, but in any case, it's well worth your time to come over here and make sure a few things are set correctly. So first, you should be in bright field mode. And then as far as these three sliders, goes, let's, three sliders go, let's review them very briefly. This is the offset slider, it should be at zero. This is the gain slider, it should be at one. And this is the exposure, meaning this is how long the camera integrates a signal until it gives us an image. And right now it is at 64 milliseconds. And that is too much because that's why we're getting this, this pink, which means the image is completely saturated. So when you're in a situation like this, or really when you're in any situation, you wanna click on auto expose, which is this button here. And you'll see that the software will toggle through a few options until it finds something that gives a more reasonable image. Um, so now we can see this, this uh, sample, as I said, was a slice of brain. Uh, we're looking at the dentate gyrus in the hippocampus. That's a particular region of the brain. I picked it because I, I know what it's supposed to look like. 
and there's a few features to, to sort of uh, pay attention to here. The first is that if you look very, very closely, and I don't think uh, this is going to be visible in the video, you might see that this image is not perfectly in focus. So if I adjust that, there it goes fuzzy. It goes fuzzy again and kind of find that sweet spot where it's in focus. Um, so the reason it may be in focus by eye, but it might not be in focus um, on the screen is that they, those two uh, things, your eyes and the camera, focus at slightly different positions. So you might need to tweak it a little bit. The other thing to note is that the coloring of this may not look right. So this, which you may have seen as white, if you look by the eyepiece, may look a little bit yellow or a little bit green or a little bit blue. Um, and so we, we need to solve that. So the way we do that is we move completely off the sample. So if I look here, you can see that the light is hitting the sample. Now I move completely off. So you can see I'm not even on the sample right now. If I look back here, um, it's hard probably for you to see, but um, it has a slight reddish yellow tinge. And you can also see a few other things, which is the middle looks quite brighter than the edges. And there's also some sort of garbage here, okay? So we're going to um, actually use um, this position where there's nothing to set a bunch of things correctly and to take a reference image that we can then use to correct all other images we take with these settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is do another auto expose because now I don't have the glass and the sample, so um, I may need a slightly different number. Turns out in this case we didn't, but in some cases that is that that is something that happens when you auto if you remove the sample if the sample is very heavily stained, uh, it might be the case that. Uh, when you remove it, the, the image is saturated. So it's a good idea to do an auto expose again. Um, to check whether the image is saturated, if it's very saturated, what you'll see is totally pink. If it's a little bit saturated, meaning if it's overexposed a little bit, you might see just a little pink kind of in the middle. Let me see if I, yeah, so. Right, so you might see something like this, okay? The other um, giveaway for um, uh, an, an image that has uh, been overexposed, so where the, where the exposure is too long, is if these numbers are fixed. So these are the intensities of the pixels, and the number on the right is the maximum pixel intensity. And so if these aren't changing, that means that they're at maxed out. And so if you see that, if you see that these are fixed, while everything else is changing, that means you have saturation and you need to lower the exposure. Okay, so you can see at the same exposure we were on for auto expose, which was seven, all of them are changing. So that's good. So now we have this. Um, one thing we'd like is for this to actually look white. So we're going to go to video, auto white balance. What that's going to do is it's going to tweak the different colors so that the image looks more white. And to me, I'm here sitting in front of the system, it actually does look slightly more white, so that's good. You can then come back here and make sure it's not saturated. And you can see that this one tends to be stuck, as does this one. So if you see that they're stuck after the white balancing, just reduce the exposure just a little bit, okay? Even if this looks a little bit dark, that's fine. That'll get solved later, as I'll show you by taking a reference image, okay? So here we see everything seems to be oscillating nicely. And so we're gonna take an image of this. And so you might ask, why, why do we wanna take an image of this? This is not the sample. But the reason is this um, will help us correct the images of the sample so they are much, much better uh, through a process that's called flat fielding. So to take an image, I'm going to press this button here. It's gonna capture a single frame. That frame is going to be shown here in the library. And if I click on it and then click on it again, I can rename it whatever I want. And so I'm going to call it blank. The name it had was the name of whatever the last person that was using this had put as their base name. So if I go back to video preview, now I'm in a condition where I have settings that um, I'm happy with. I'm going to go back to the sample. So I'm going to go here and just move the sample back into position. So you can see on the screen, I'm kind of moving the sample back into position. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going to focus on this sample. That seems in focus to me. And now I can start taking pictures. But when I take pictures, I don't want them to have the name of whatever the last person was doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to video. I'm going to go to acquisition setup. And the only thing I need to bother with here, you can ignore everything else, just this name. And so I'm going to call this 10x hippo because it's in the hippocampus. Okay, but you can call it whatever you want. So I just say okay. All right, so now we're in a position where we can start to take images. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to take an image here. Okay, now I have that 10x hippo. And as I take more images, moving around and taking images, um, by pressing that button there, what's going to happen is it's going to rename them automatically. So let me see if I can get this done. So let me just move to the hippocampus in the other hemisphere. There we go. I'll take an image of this. And then I'm just going to take one more of the ventral hippocampus. So that's just another region of the same brain structure. Okay? I'll take another image. Okay, so now you can see I took three images oh, called 10x hippo, 10x hippo 2, 10x hippo 3, and blank. So this is the part where you can take as many images as you want. Just keep it the following in mind. If you're going to take images with different objectives, you will need to have a blank taken with each objective, okay? And all the images you want to compare, they should have been taken with the same settings. So you'll have one set of settings for your 10x and one set of settings for your 20x and so on and so forth. Um, okay, but let's say that for today, this is all I want to do. Um, so now how do I get my images out of here? So the way I get them out of here is I select them here. And I go to File and say Export. So it's a good idea to put them in a separate folder. You never want to put them in this special folder. This special folder is where the database with this with these images is, and so that can only read, be read by Velocity. And if you start putting stuff in there, you're going to cause all sorts of problems. So just make another folder. Let's call it today's uh, date, and I'll call it exports, just so I can differentiate it from the other one. And double click. And so now, how we save this is very important. So we want to save it as a TIFF, not any of these other options. We don't want an OME TIFF. We don't want a JPEG. We want a TIFF. When you save it as a tip, you have options and naming. So we want to visit both of those. So in options, we want to go here. We want to say convert to RGB for publication. And we want to make sure these two things are not clicked. Even if we just did this, every single time we save, we have to come and check this. Because if we don't, there's a bug in the software that will write the data incorrectly. So every single time you try and export data, um, you have to go here to options and, and make sure that this says convert to RGB for publication and scale. If you don't, even if that's what it was before, it will fail. So it will, it will export something that you won't be able to, um, to use correctly. So I'm going to say OK. And finally, in naming, we can decide how we want to name them. So uh, we can start with the library name. We can append the item name. We can append a numerical substrict. We can append a text. Um, so I'm just going to say append the item name. So basically, the files are going to be called whatever this is. So 10x hippo, 10x hippo 2, etc. Now, if you have a situation where a bunch of these have the same name, you may want to add a numerical substrict. Uh, sometimes it's useful to start with the library name because that can be the date. So you can use whatever combination you want. So I'm just going to say OK and say export. So now if I look at where I exported those files, I have these. And so I can double click on these images and see them in the Explorer. But if you notice, you'll see that these images are a little bit dark around the edges, um, and they have some imperfections. So uh, I have a video explaining how to do flat fielding on these images, which is a procedure that will improve them by using the blank image as a reference for um, how the microscope performs, and then remove the uneven illumination and the fact that there are some imperfections that are visible, all well, these little dots and um, uh, things in the image. OK, uh, that's a different video. I'll put the link in the notes to this video. I hope that was useful, and please let me know if you have any questions. So one thing um, I forgot, actually, uh, when I was signing off, is that we need to turn this thing off. So let me remind you how to do that. So 
This is the BX61 shutdown procedure. So we're going to clean all objectives if we use them. We did not use them, so I can skip that. Export images, connect to the server, save files to the folder, and disconnect from the server. Um, so you will need to get your files off of here. And so by connecting to the server, uh, you can do that. Um, there are instructions for that on our website, so I'm not going to cover that now. Exit velocity, so I'm going to do that. Pull the IC slider to the out position if applicable. That's item number four. It is in the out position. Turn off the Ratiga camera if applicable. So we'll do that. Check the calendar. Is anyone booked within the next two hours? So I actually just checked the calendar and there is someone. So I'm going to log out of the kiosk and I'm done. If I hadn't, if there weren't someone, I would continue with the checklist where I would shut down the computer. So down here. Then I would turn off the Olympus box, which is here, and do any of the following that are applicable. Turn off the Hamamatsu box, which is number two. Turn off the mercury lamp, cover the microscope stand, but not the black box in the back, and then log out of the kiosk. So if this were on, which would be indicated by a green light, I would press and hold this button. And if this were on, I would turn it off. I could tell if it were on because this burner on light would be green, OK? And now, because we're in COVID times, we have to disinfect after using the system. So we have to wipe the eyepieces with pure ethanol on lens paper. So these are the eyepieces. This is pure ethanol. There's lens paper here. Once we're done with that, we need to wipe with 70% ethanol on a, uh, a Kim wipe or paper towels. There are paper towels over there. We need to do the knobs. So here. Here, here, this button, these buttons are probably a good idea as well. All of this stuff, the mouse, and the keyboard. And please use this, that's 70% ethanol, and spray it not on the microscope, spray it on the paper towels. Okay, I hope that was useful, and please do let me know if you have any questions.